Are you looking to compare prices for your brand new car? Well then, visit autodeal.com.ph, select the car that you want, and choose to request for a quote from our network of over 500 official dealer partners nationwide. Within minutes, you'll start receiving offers from the dealers you've selected. All that's left is for you to select the deal that's best for you. Get the best deal on Autodeal. Ah, the Mini. One of the very few cars in the world, very few cars in the world that don't make me look like an ant standing next to a boot. And yet, despite its diminutive size, it's got more character than even a BMW X7 can carry inside. Now, I mention BMW, of course, well, because more, more than 20 years now, this has actually been a BMW with one very huge telltale sign. Underneath, you will find a two-liter four-cylinder with a twin-power turbo, mind you, that is mated to a seven-speed DCT that produces 198 horses and 280 newton meters of torque. Now, if that sounds familiar, it's because it's the same engine that you will find in a X1 and a 3 Series, a 5 Series, basically any four-cylinder car that BMW has, it's basically the same thing. And in some cases, you'll even find that same engine in a Supra. But that's another story for a completely different time. Uh, if you're wondering about fuel efficiency, well, inside the city, behaved city traffic, we were able to do about 12 and a half kilometers per liter. Even better on the highway at 20 kilometers per liter. But if you're gonna buy this Mini, I don't think that fuel efficiency is gonna be your utmost number one priority because who needs fuel efficiency when you're talking about a car that can do zero to 100 kilometers per hour in just seven seconds, or rather in under seven seconds, huh? That's something else. By the way, have you guys ever seen the hood of a, a Mini like this? It kind of reminds me of like peekaboo jeans. What's that? You know, the jeans where you can see somebody's butt the whole time? Am I? I'm probably the only one. Iconic as iconic can be, it's got the look that just brings you home to mom, doesn't it? You have the lights that everybody has been used to for the past 20 plus years. This is reminiscent of the Cooper S of before where there really is a hood scoop, but on this particular one, this actually doesn't do nothing but show off a little flex. However, underneath, all of these vents actually do work. Your radiator, your huge radiator there, you've got holes on the side uh, for aerodynamics, and these scoops right here, this sucks in as much air as possible to cool off the brakes. That works really well. Down the side, you've got 17-inch wheels that are wrapped in 205 45 series tires, both front and back, and of course, discs brake front and back as well. Here, you're looking at just a little bit more than 140 millimeters of ground clearance on a, on a shape that, again, iconic. Anywhere this car goes, you immediately know it's a Mini, not just because of its size, but also because of its shape. Then you've got this beautiful black roof, okay, and the, the glass. Well, the, the way that they do it is that it wraps around the entire automobile. What's nice, too, is that frameless doors. Not really the safest things on the planet, but they're beautiful, aren't they? And then round side mirrors. Before we head over to the back, I wanna show you something. Now earlier I said that the Mini is most definitely diminutive in size, but not so tiny as it was originally. See, this new Mini now is about 3,850 millimeters long. The original Mini was just 3,000 millimeters long, which makes it roughly about that much smaller. This car is small, but it is huge compared to the original. Like I would be the original and this one would be like Detlef Shrimp. You have no idea who that is, do you? You child. At the rear, let's start with the antenna that sticks out and makes the car look like it's an RC. <laughs> very, very cute. Some form of a spoiler up here, more like a shade really than anything else. And then you've got your third brake light right underneath. Down below, because it is an S, you've got massive twin exhaust down here. It's, that looks very, very nice because the finishers actually look extremely gorgeous. And then on either side, of course, you have your reverse lights and your brake lights, which are a very good reminder of the car's roots, which stem from the folks on the other side of the pond. 
When you open her up, do be careful when you open her up because the exhausts can get kind of warm and Jack actually burnt his leg on that. Lesson learned. Uh, open her up, there is 211 liters of space. So really not much. You're looking at maybe two overnight bags or in the case of my wife, half a day because she, Never mind. Um, when you fold the seats and get rid of the tonneau, you are looking at over 700 liters of space, which can definitely carry more than just one balik bayan box, thanks to the fact that this opening is actually quite huge. Now, there isn't much space for the rear passengers themselves, but I will still show that to you. Come on, let's go inside. To say that it's tight back here is, well, if I'm being honest, it's an understatement because this is Jack's normal driving position. And if he were in a comfortable, no, sorry, this is his generous driving position. If he were in a comfortable driving position, then my legs would be like sent to the shadow realm or something. They'd really disappear. It's very tight back here. So for, for my case, for people like myself, that's about 5'5 five, five and below. Yeah, you can. It's not going to be very comfortable, but it is plausible. So this is definitely not for like medium to large size adults no not at all this is like buko pandak or bust that is <laughs> it man there are also no toys back here except maybe for three there are three one two and three cup holders and of course seat belts to keep you in third passenger forget about it you can barely fit two passengers in here um the last thing i want to mention here is that although i myself can be inside this car in this driving position if jack's driving i think i can go for maybe about an hour and a half without feeling bad. Others, however, might feel, start to feel claustrophobic back here. And if you do, the good thing is, is that at least you have, ah, your share of a sunroof. That's nice. That doesn't make my legs feel better, but it makes me essentially feel a little bit better. And then when you close it, it's like, oh my gosh, Jack, move, Jack, move, Jack, move, Jack, move, Jack. Get out, I wanna see you get out. Oh, this is, this is going to be tight also. Okay, get, yeah, I can get out. Me, I can. I'd like to see you get in there. Kaya mo yan. My butt won't fit. Your butt will fit, dude. Okay. Go in head first. There you go. Okay. Like the opposite of the birthing canal. Now close it. That's, I moved it forward already. Okay. So that's my driving position. Okay, now get out of the car. So yeah, okay. Didn't help that there's no you can do it. There you go. <laughs> okay, now let's move the chair into my driving position. Yeah, much, much better. Now, even with the door open right now, uh, it still feels like it's very compact in here. Not in a bad way, in a good way. I feel as if that everything is within reach and I feel like uh, a pilot of a jet fighter, right? And, and it, it feels good in a sense that way. It's not a loungy car by any means necessary. No, not at all, especially when you close the door. Yeah, you really feel like you're gonna get engaged inside this automobile. Really cool. The bolsterings are very, very apparent. And then you have this function where the little come, uh, this part can come out for a bit more thigh support for much taller passengers. I don't know how they're gonna fit in here, but yeah. Um, so these seats are very good in keeping you very engaged in the automobile. So is to uh, them not sliding you around because this material, although leather, it actually is perforated. So there's a more grip there. More leather can be sp can be found on the steering wheel, which is of good size. It's substantial in size. Jack wanted me to use the term girthy. I said no. no. I didn't. Yes, it's in the script. Um, but I think the the word substantial is a lot better. The leather feels very very good. Up on top, it's soft touch. It may look like plastic, but it's actually soft. This is the part. Well, I'm just not too sure about. It's um. I think Mini did a little too much for this particular model anyway, because you can bespoke these cars in like 20 billion ways. So this one kind of reminds me of um, like like a second cousin twice removed that nobody really invites to the reunions because they're odd. <laughs> Am I talking about myself? I could be. Anyway, more on the automobile. 
So you have paddles on the on the steering wheel, which is great. Your cruise here, your controls for your infotainment system, which is, by the way, an eight inch uh, touchscreen that has a reverse camera and it also has wireless Apple CarPlay. You have a full TFT display, it's your instrument cluster. And then you have your electronic shifter here. This system here is kind of reminiscent of BMW's iDrive, which is how you connect actually to the infotainment infotainment system and then many many toggles inside this automobile which I actually find very very cute because they're chrome from the start stop to uh, the traction control to your uh, driving modes all the way up here if you move up here you can control uh, you can open rather your sunroof and then this obviously is the switch that can change the lights the ambient lights inside the car to like one million trillion gajillion colors it's actually very cool and then the one thing that Jack and I noticed also is that there is a lot of round things inside this automobile. From the casing that encloses the uh, infotainment screen to your air vents, to even your side mirror, or rather your rear view mirror, to the lights in here, check this out. To the cover of the lights, is that too far for you Jack here? To the cover of the lights, uh, of, uh, look at that, it's round, and then you have round here, round cup holders obviously round here, even the pedals are a little bit round. Jack, can you see this? Yeah, I'm gonna move back. Can you see that? Look at that, it's round. To the speakers on the door, that's round too. The door handle, that's Jack, Jack's right, see? it's Well, it's half a circle, but it's round nonetheless. And in that roundness, you will find the cup holders here, but that's the only, basically the only type of uh, cargo space that you have up here. It can fit my water bottle, Jack's water bottle, forget about it. But really that's it. There are, there are door cards where you can put maybe your phone in, that's about it. But really there's no other space in here. The center armrest is, you can fit like, an older phone in here. I don't know if, you, if the newer phones will even fit in there, so that's probably better off for coins. You do have a uh, glove box. It is kind of deep, but it's not very large. So really, this car is just meant for the passengers themselves and like an overnight bag in the back. But the ace, the absolute ace up its sleeve is really just how fun and how good this car drives, which we're going to get to right now. But before we do, I might ask you guys to please subscribe to our channel because we create these videos just for you guys. is fantastic and extremely snappy. I love it. It really feels like the car wants to get pushed and I love it about it. Uh, it doesn't complain much either, whether you're taking it around turns, tight turns at speed, or uh, when you're going on long highways, zero complaints. When you're, when, you're, when you're really flooring it and you're pushing it, there's barely any wheel spin. There's just so much grip. And this is just a two wheel drive. It's not an all wheel drive either. The DCT works pretty great. When you downshift, it bites immediately. Then, then, then there's the pickup again. I love it. The DCT works great. Either you're on long stretches of highway or on twisty such as this, and then you hear the engine sort of like come alive and zero wheel spin. I love, oh my gosh, this thing is so much fun. When you're slowing down, you'll notice that when you do floor it, there's a lot of torque that can be found immediately at such a low range. <laughs> and it just pops, man. This car just really absolutely pops. It wants you to go faster. It wants you to push it. And you know what? The car can, it can handle it. It's not your average sedan where you need to drive it a bit properly. This one, it can take the punishment or as much as you can punish it because really I, you'd have to be really crazy to be able to to take this thing off its rails 
The turning in is absolutely fantastic. You, you point the steering wheel in that direction and the car just goes. It really does have a go-kart feel as it should, man. It's a mini. It's just wow. Whether you're going uphill, downhill, and then you take a tight turn like this, oh, it just holds, man. I love it. Downshifts work really, really well. The paddles work really well. Maybe a little too well, because uh, Jack's getting a little sick inside the car. When We should put a camera on him, really, when I drive like this, because it's too much fun. Oh, Jack, hold on. This one's a good ride. <laughs> yes! Oh, I love this car. First, I need to point out that I am an under tall person and I look like I actually belong inside this automobile because it's obviously not very large. But what I noticed, and when I told Jack about it, he said, oh boy, you're telling me. What I noticed is that when I drive in the proper driving position and I'm trying to be as snug as possible, my elbows both on my right side and on my left side when I'm turning, if I keep my hands perpetually planted on the steering wheel, it does knock into the sides of the automobile. Not exactly the bolsters, but the center armrest and then the armrest that's on the door. So if I were to do, let's say for example, a full turn with my hands still on the steering wheel like this, it would get a bit tight. Now that's for a smaller person like me. So a much larger person, yeah, that actually might be a very big issue. However, despite how large or tiny you may be, getting into the proper driving position should be quite easy because you do have a telescopic steering wheel. And then a really cool feature is that when you move the steering wheel, the instrument cluster actually goes with it. So it doesn't get, it, it, the steering wheel never gets in its way, which is really a very nice thing. Now, when you're driving it normally, as, as normal as can be, you are, like I mentioned earlier, on 45 series tires. So the comfort of that is, well, there's a bit of a compromise that you have to go to get through. Plus the fact that the suspension of this automobile is very tough. I won't say stiff, it's very tough because it's meant to do the twists and the turns and to hold you in place. So it can be a bit bouncy for those that are looking for a much more comfortable ride. This isn't going to be a seven-seater SUV. But I will say that even on EDSA uh, or any road uh, just outside the city that is imperfect, and we do have a lot of them, the bumps will come into the automobile, but it's not an unexpected thing. It's not a fight between the automobile and the road. It's not like it's not like if somebody insults you and then they don't stop insulting you for like 30 minutes. It just keeps hurting and hurting and hurting. This one is sort of like the road is like a quick insult and then it's done. It accepts it very well and, and then it turns the other cheek and then it just keeps going. Oh, the Mini has feelings. It just turns the other cheek, Jack. Now, speaking of character, just a while ago, we were driving this thing on tight, twisty turns, and like I said, it's a lot of fun. But when you're inside the city at lower speeds, um, it still can put a smile on your face. Uh, let's say, for example, you are in tighter roads and you want to take it a little bit faster than usual, or if you're even at the stoplight, or if you want to do something slightly irresponsible inside the city, the car can give you that. It will still put a smile on your face. It's just that what I'm trying to get at is the car has so much character. Whether you're out carving mountain roads or just inside the city. I mean, just the look of it, obviously, gives it so much character. What I'm trying to say is that whatever is at outside translates definitely to how it drives and handles on the inside. That's for sure. I'll make no secret of the fact that I have always been a fan of minis. My family had one when I was also tiny mini, if you will put it. Um, and I've seen the, the, the progression from the very tiny automobile to it basically being a German automobile, compact and, and always looking like it's very fun to drive. In my head, I even have the color of the mini that I want and the size of the wheels that I want. I just absolutely want one. And I can imagine myself going out, let's say, for example, for a Sunday afternoon drive with my wife. However, there are two things that unfortunately, just in for me, that have um, sort of like um, 
hampered any or quelled any dreams that I may have of actually getting a mini. Number one is, well, it's not just me and my wife anymore. It's actually me, my wife, and the two kids. And yeah, even Alessandra won't fit back there comfortably. Number two, well, that's kind of a bigger thing. Which unfortunately is its price, which isn't so mini. The 2023 three-door Mini Cooper S comes in at 3,150,000 Philippine pesos. Now, I'm not saying that it's not worth every single centavo because actually it is. I'm just saying that it's not within mine and a lot of people's budget. But for those that can afford this automobile, then I envy you oh so much. And at the same time, I hate you oh so much because it truly is such a fun car to drive. Look for it on autodeal.com.ph. Try the get quote button and you might find yourself a good deal on a new Mini Cooper.